Have you ever heard, Oh, but don't make your map so boxy like that, you silly goober. Or, Yeah, man, I bet your map would really benefit from some more elevation. Or, That's just way too much empty space. Make sure to fill it up, okay? If you have... I'm sorry. While none of this advice is wrong, it is bad. So often I've seen things like this said to RPG Maker beginners with absolutely no follow-up, or if there is a follow-up, it isn't very thorough. Oftentimes, those of us who have more experience with the engine know what to do and what we're trying to say, but since we're all socially awkward game developers, we have a very hard time saying it. So even though there's about a billion mapping tutorials for RPG Maker on YouTube already, today I'm going to go over the aforementioned advice and more, but try to explain it more thoroughly or in a way that actually makes sense. Bad maps are the easiest thing to fix and the thing I see most often. They drive me absolutely crazy, so following what my therapist said, I'm going to try to fix this and save my sanity. I should also clarify that for this video I'll be mapping in RPG Maker MV. It's the engine I'm most familiar with, and even though MZ would get me more views, I absolutely despise the MZ RTP. Oh, also RTP stands for Runtime Package. Now, even I don't know what that means, but it's really just referring to the art assets that come with the engine when you purchase it. I'm also not going to be covering parallax mapping. While basically every bit of advice in this video is relevant to level design in general, I have to make this specification because... RPG Maker. This sentence absolutely fucking sucks. When I first started using RPG Maker, I heard this said quite a lot, and I just didn't really get it. I mean, come on. Uh, look at my room. Come on. Uh, come on. Come on. Get out of there. All right. All right. You focused? All right. Look. Corner. 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 Ceiling. Floor. Box. Anime girl. So allow me to fix up this piece of advice. If you look at the blueprints for basically any house, you'll see that quite a few of the rooms are boxy, and that's fine. Boxy rooms aren't bad when filled with interesting things. I think the main reason this advice is doled out so easily is because a lot of beginners don't know how to utilize the RTP to decorate a room. A simple square room with just a bed sucks. It isn't visually interesting, and the whole point of games is for them to be visually interesting. So, is using only squares in a house a good idea? No, you need variation. Variation keeps the players engaged. The player always needs something to look at, and preferably always something different. Different room shapes are always a good idea. It helps distinguish areas from one another and also allows for creative room decorations. When you're mapping a house, you need to take the whole house into consideration. If you share just one room of your house map online, you're going to hear it's too boxy quite a lot. In the context of the entire house, or I guess just in the context of the entire indoors map, having a couple boxy rooms is fine, it's realistic. But don't make everything a box. Switch it up. Play with the layout. You wouldn't want to be stuck just looking at the same four walls all day, so why would your main character? You also need to consider what that room is being used for. If it's a bedroom, the map size should be smaller than, say, the living room. Size communicates certain emotions, so smaller would make an area feel cozier, while a larger map would make it feel like an area meant for gathering people. I mentioned before that this advice is most commonly said because the developer doesn't know how to properly decorate a room, but... Uh, how do you properly decorate a room? Well, the easiest place to start is by looking at your room. Duh. I'm gonna assume your room isn't just a bed. Each and every one of us are individuals, and we add our own individual flair to our rooms. For example, my room has a bunch of anime shit, while my sister's room has a bunch of... Uh... Astrology. Get into your character's head. If you want to do this effectively, you should read Story by Robert McKee. There's a section in his book going over just that, and think about their individual personality. If they don't have enough of a personality that you can decorate a room, scrap your entire game and start over. It's not a story worth telling. Your character has likes and dislikes, and those would be reflected in their room. Then, just apply this philosophy to each and every character and NPC's room. Give them all personalities! Personality for you! Personality for you! and reflect those personalities in their room decorations and designs. And boom, your game world just got that much more well fleshed out. On top of individualizing each room, I should probably explain just generally how to fill an indoor map. I actually have a very ingenious strategy for indoor mapping called 
Just throw a bunch of shit down. It should be shit that makes sense. For example, a commoner's bedroom wouldn't have a massive throne in it. You shouldn't fill floor space for the sake of filling floor space, but you should fill floor space, you feel me? Slap down a table and throw some shit on it. Smack a bookshelf there, some pots over here, a shelf over yonder. Basically, just fill the space. You don't want dead space with just one or two things to look at. Like I said before, the player's eyes should always be engaged. You don't want them to wander. As a rule of thumb, I like to say there should always be five different things to look at, not including the floor or walls, and this is applicable to outdoor maps as well. B -b -b bonus tip! A quick little bonus tip that goes well with the subject of decorating is how to modify tile sets so you can make the frickin' painting actually sit in the center of the wall. Now, there's a couple different ways you can organize this, but I'm gonna just take you through my way. Go into your games folder, go to images, tile sets, then grab the one you want to modify. In this case, it's inside underscore B since we're changing the painting's position. Copy and paste that tile set onto your desktop, and then open it in your image manipulation software of choice. I use GIMP. Use the selection tool to select the painting. Cut and paste it, and then drag it down over the paintings below it or to the curtain above it. It usually takes me a few tries to position it correctly, but that's okay. Essentially, you're trying to split the painting half on one tile and half on another. Paste it onto a new layer, and then delete everything else below it. This step is the one that changes. If you're already maxed out on tile sets used, then you're gonna want to do this whole process on top of a tile set you're already already using. If you aren't maxed out on tile sets, then I advise creating a blank tile set you can add whatever you want to, so you're only ever using the tiles you need. Anyways, rename the tile set and pop it back into your tile sets folder. Then, within RPG Maker, go to Settings, Tile Sets, and choose the tile set you're using. To check which tile set you're using, right-click on your map, select Edit, and you can see right here. Back in Settings, go to B, C, D, or E, and change it to the tile set we just modified. Now, slap that painting into the center of the wall, baby. If it doesn't line up, change the positioning until it does. It's super easy. Again, this is good advice, but this sentence doesn't provide enough context to be helpful on its own. In order to actually figure out how to achieve this, let's once again look to the real world. This is a picture of Kamiyama from the Tokushima Prefecture in Japan. The most important thing to notice right away is how many mountains surround the area. On the town's website, it states that 83% of the town's area is mountainous. This is an incredibly important thing to consider for your own game's towns. A town situated in the mountains is going to have very different and more varied terrain than one situated on a flat plain such as this segment of California City. The distinction between these two areas needs to be apparent in your game's maps as well. Anyways, for now let's get back to Kamiyama. Take a sec to really look at this image. What do you see? I personally notice three separate main chunks. First, the main stretch of the town that is more or less on even terrain, then these two segments on the right that are still connected to the main town but stretch upwards, and finally, this segment in the middle left that seems to be somewhat isolated in the trees, a bit off from the main town. In Kamiyama, the varied elevation is very apparent, and you can somewhat tell how it would appear in RPG Maker. The trick when you're creating your own mountainous towns is to think creatively about their layout like this. Is the entire town really so easily connected? connected in one spot? Do some areas rise upwards, and if so, what is the purpose of that? Would there be an isolated segment of town? What would it be used for? These aren't all things you need to consider, but you do need to go somewhat along this line of thinking. Oftentimes, a town isn't just all connected in one flat stretch of grass, especially if it's deep in the mountains. Now, let's go back to California City. The fact of the matter is that cities or towns that look like this are not visually interesting. Similarly to the statement, your map is too boxy, comments about needing more elevation in your map often come because said map isn't visually interesting. These houses are here because people needed a place to live. While your characters do also need a place to live, you can take creative liberties in your game world where you aren't limited by reality to make things more visually interesting. While you can make a town that looks like this in your game, Omori did it, you really have to consider the area your town is set in and what you want that area to communicate to the player. In Omori, this area is supposed to be similar to reality, and creating a flat, boring suburban area fits with what Omori wants to communicate to the player. However, most RPG Maker games I've played are inspired by anime, and anime is for the most part an escapist medium. People who are trying to distract themselves from reality don't want to be reminded of reality in your game, even if it's in such a small way like a flat town with no elevation. Am I, uh, am I just overthinking it? Uh, uh, 
probably. Those are really the two big things I wanted to address in this video. I do have a couple more tips I want to throw out there, but at this point I'm not really going to be following the whole actually explaining shtick. There are three tree tiles in RPG Maker MV, the two in the outside tile set and one in the SF outside tile set. Using the tip from before, get all the three tree tiles into whatever tile set you're mapping with and make use of all of them. The outside tile set also has a bunch of weeds, flowers, rocks, and other shit you can use to spice up your forests. Like guys, have you ever gone out in nature? and seen two trees that look the same? Have you ever seen perfectly mowed grass in the middle of a forest? I'll take a wager that you haven't. Nature isn't uniform, it's nature. Make sure your maps reflect that, and no matter what, don't ever use this tree auto tile, because it looks like dog shit. Overlay an image or use a screen tent to convey the fact you're deep in a forest, not this bum-ass tile. <laughs> For my game Amy, which is free on Steam by the way, link below, I used a Vigistella art pack. Since I was using an art pack, I knew this immediately meant my game wouldn't be visually unique, and with the RPG Maker RTP, this problem is even more apparent. So, what did I do? I don't have any artistic talent, so how did I make my game visually unique in this regard? I went into GIMP, fucked around with different filters, and ever so slightly changed the art pack so it wouldn't be the same as everyone else. I kept the original art pack style, but used my modified one for certain parts of the game's story to emphasize certain things. In this respect, I made the art my own, although full credit still goes to Vizestella for it, and I've done the same with the RTP in the past. This is something I highly recommend you do as well. It's super easy to apply filters, and all it takes is some creative sense to make them look good. Modifying art or tile sets is much easier than creating your own. Just make sure that you have the original creator's permission beforehand. So yeah, anyways, um, that's about all I've got for this video, guys. Uh, if, you d if you didn't like anything, uh, th then make sure to hit the dislike button while you can, because YouTube's taking it away, because they're fucking smoking crack or something. Um, if, if you, if you want to subscribe, that'd be kind of, kind of funny. Um, and, uh, just, like, uh, like, I don't know, like, have a good day, like, uh, bye. <laughs> Let's make it a little bit more.